Hello and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Good morning. I am MFJJ and here we are tying in a peep sight, which is a very basic, very easy task that everyone should be able to do if they want to. So we figured we'd cover it. Uh, we did the loop video. Now we're going to do a peep video and we'll just keep getting more elaborate as we go. Um, but we felt it relevant because I was outside shooting this morning with Forrest and my peep is too damn small. I can't see all the way around the housing and I need to cut it out and redo it anyway. So we figured we'd just simply show you that task. This is tying in a peep. So first off, if you have to cut out your peep previous, I always try to cut it out if you bring that in tight around here because I can hold it against metal and I don't risk touching the fiber of my string to accidentally cut a piece. So I'm going to cut this one out real quick. Just use a nice sharp razor blade. And as soon as I get one piece cut, I'll start unwrapping it. There we go. I got it? Yeah, I got it. Just about. Got it. Okay, so. An unwrapper. And before I get too far down here, I will put the other peep in here to make sure it goes back in the same exact spot. If you're really worried about it moving when you put it back in, you can always grab a silver Sharpie and mark the string where your peep is. But I'm pretty confident I can put it right back in that spot, so I'm going to... I lined up here. Yeah. So this is a longer axle to axle bow and I haven't shot in a hunting configuration with this long of a bow in a while. Um, so I, I ended up using a little too small of a peep sight. Um, so that is a 732 peep and that's where we're going to go with that. So now that I've got it back in there, I can take the weight off. Unwrap this the rest of the way, and then I'll go over how I tie these in so y'all can do it the way I do it if you like. Um, this is a way I learned when I was a kid. Uh, it's the way they used to serve everything by hand before jigs and finishing. And I've probably tied peeps in this way for, oh gosh, 35 years, 30, 35 years, somewhere around there when I first learned. I try to pull off about 18 to 24 inches of string material. That's probably more. That's probably more like 36. It's too much, but we'll be safe. Rather, uh, rather run too much and throw some away. Um, I don't see any beeswax. Hang on a second. Okay. Now, I like to use beeswax for this. I'm also using uh, number two nylon is what this is. This is about the cheapest, one of the cheapest materials you can possibly get. But I'm not doing that because it's cheap. I'm doing this because it's actually soft. It has a little bit of give to it. So when you try to compress on something, two things happen. One, you can hang on to it. And two, it actually pulls into the string just a little bit harder. So I think it holds better than these really hard servings like the, the Halo. Um, I don't like hand serving with this because I can't get it really, really, really tight. It's very difficult to do. And it's very abrasive. So if you try to compress it on your string and have to take it out, because this is the one thing we do change periodically. We're not usually reserving here or receiving here. It'll mar the string. The nylon won't. So I really strongly recommend the number two nylon. Um, we don't have this on our website at the moment, but when we get a bunch of spools in, I've got some ordered from, uh, from BCY. And we will list them if you want to put your, uh, your peep in yourself. This is beeswax. This is a little bit of a piece that's left. Do not use synthetic waxes. Do not use like Textite or Seal Tight or ML6 or X Wax or uh, the silicone based waxes. They're slick. This is tacky. This is sticky. Um, this is what they used to use on Dacron bowstrings back in the day when everybody shot a recurve and shot a polyester style material. This sticks. Stick, when you're pulling on a hand serving, will help keep it tight as you let go of it. So always use beeswax, and I really like using nylon. You can use other stuff if you want, but I have a hard time not recommending nylon. So to start, you want to come in here tight forced. So you take your tail end, you know, leave about mm, four inches to six inches. Um, start where your old serving was, or if you're starting anew, I'd like to go down you know, a quarter inch or so past the separation of where the peep is and just hold it and wrap over the end. Just hold it with your finger 
wrap over it again. And when you get over the end of your material here by about mm, six or seven, that's five, oops, six. Don't get really fixated on how consistent it looks or if there's a little gap in it. Because when you get to here, wrap it around your finger and pull really hard here and it'll all tighten up really good. And then you don't have to worry about it. Take your tail end, bring it back to this side, which is going to be, there you go, and then wrap over there. The whole time I'm trying to keep tension on this material. I try to go at least, you know, four or five past that. All right, and then cinch it up again, and we should be pretty good. At this point, since there's no separation here, I'm going to start wrapping through the one side. If you have some fray out like that, Stick it in your mouth and get it a little wet so it's not catching on stuff. Put it through that hole. Cinchy. And you're probably going to get about 10 or so wrap ups through here. Now, not every peep can be tied in this way, but most of them can be. I've seen a lot of different ways to tie in a peep over the years, but I have a hard time not going with this route because it's just it's just done so so well for me over the years. I, it doesn't create movement, it doesn't uh, create oscillation or turn the string. It's very consistent, so I keep doing it this way. Whoop. Okay, so that's probably enough to get up to where the peep is. Whoop. Now. And up to here, I will wrap over the peep. One, two, three. So I like to kind of fill that little gap. Go back to the other side. So you're doing the same amount on each side. Get it through the hole. And then pull this tail underneath the string into where the peep is, like that. See that? Okay, so now you can actually let go of it and it shouldn't unwind or unravel and keep the tension on. Now, if you have a needle nose, which these little uh, little pliers like these guys are super handy because they've got a little inlet in them for wrapping and pulling. These are loop pliers. I think these are an Easton one, if I remember right. Um, every workstation we have has these in them. But you'll take this little tail end that you started with and squeeze it in your needle nose and then wrap it around a couple of times so you can get a little leverage on. Do not overdo this, but pull just a little bit and you'll see the rope tightening just a little and there, there was a bump here and now there's not a bump there. That's as tight as you need to get it. Cut off, leave about a quarter inch tail, somewhere around there. Uh, and then use your lighter. I like to use these little camp-like lighters so you keep the flame away from you so you don't burn your fingers. Remember, your fire is going to go up, so try to rotate it to where your cut end is facing up so you don't hit your string. Melt it down, and then that will keep it in place. So now we can wrap around the other side. You can probably come back the other way unless you want to stay there. That's up to you. All right. Now, it's not super important that you have the exact same number of wraps here as here. I don't really get hung up on that, but if you're a little OCD and want to have the exact same number, feel free. It won't hurt anything. It also won't hurt anything if there's one different or two different. Okay, so now we're back to here, and I'm just going to wrap over it. And I like to wrap, not pulling really hard, for about five, and then give it a good cinch. And that should snug it up. You're trying to have about the same amount of gap here as here so your peep isn't trying to move up or down. And then the finish, and here's where it gets tricky, and you'll probably want to watch this multiple times because people will forget how to do it. And I'm gonna try to go slow. I have a tendency to do these things really fast out of repetition over the years, but 
So you pull your end down, come down about six inches. Yeah, about six inches. Hold it with your hand, come back to the string and keep wrapping the same direction you were wrapping, but wrap toward the peep instead of away from the peep. Two. If you ever let go of it, hold it with your other finger so it doesn't loosen up on you. Always keeping tension on everything. If you let go of your serving, your serving will be loose and then things will move. If you keep it taut and do it correctly, it isn't going anywhere. Seven, eight, nine, ten. I think that was ten. All right, so now that I've got ten, I'm going to pull it back through. I still have tension here and I have tension here. Lay it down flat back towards your loop and wrap over the top of it with the piece that you created. One, two, and now you only have to keep tension here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now you notice there's a little bit of gaps in there, but when you grab this end, keeping tension on both, and you pull that up and then you give it a cinch, all those gaps go away and it's nice and tight and clean. Now I'm going to grab my pliers again, about six inches here, wrap around it about three or four times, give it a pull. Be careful when you do this, okay? If you pull too hard, you'll break that string and you get to start all over again. Leave about a quarter inch with the razor, toss your excess, rotate your string to where the tail end is straight up in the air so when you have fire it goes away from your string melt and touch and make it flat and that is how i tie peep side in hopefully that helped you and did it slow enough that you can follow it and try it yourself um, we will get some of that up on the website at some point if you need to buy some for yourselves to try um, and we do have all these different sizes of peeps and everything on the website if you need a different one. And why we're standing here today doing this is I needed a 732 peep to frame on that housing correctly because I wanted to see a little bit of daylight around the ring. And when I had the a 32nd of an inch difference peep size in here, I could not see the entire ring. So it is very, very finicky on exactly which one will fit. So make sure you set your peep in the string, you draw it back and check that fitment multiple times before you actually go to tying this in. And for all you at home, outside and inside do not look the same, okay? So if you walk outside and draw it back, it is going to look smaller outside than it's gonna look inside. So make sure you're in the environment in which you intend to use it in to check your peep size. That thing will look way bigger inside than it does outside. Head on over to podiumarcher.com for all your archery needs. $99 and up is free shipping. If there's stuff you're looking for there that we don't have, please message us, email us, contact us, Pony Express, whatever, send it however, just get it to us so we know what you're looking for. If we can, sell it there and list it there, we will. If we can't, we'll let you know we can't and why and then try to advise you where to get it. Um, hit that like, hit that subscribe, keep coming back. Hopefully we're making content you like and hopefully we're helping making you a little better archer because that's who I am and that's what I care about. I wanna make you better at this sport so you stick with the sport and you get other people in the sport. More archers means we have more pull against the people that don't believe in hunting and don't like archery in general or hunting or weapons or whatever you know we're all we're all those people and we need to work together we need more of us so but hey more than anything thanks for checking us out love you guys take care